Hello everybody, it's Andy Luton coming to you with a new lens review. Now that's not the only thing that's new. If you see the background looks kind of different, that's because I bought a new place. Um, I look a little bit different because I lost about 80 pounds, but none of that really matters today because this is the star of the show today. The brand new Sony 12 to 24 millimeter f2.8 G Master lens. Now, I was going on a road trip to Colorado, and this lens has just come out, uh, and, and so I went to my friends at Competitive Cameras in Dallas, Texas, and picked this thing up uh, because I, I wanted to have a great lens for my road trip. Um, and the whole reason I was going to Colorado was to go hiking. I'd never done like a proper hiking trip before. Uh, so I wanted something small, capable, uh, but still absurdly, absurdly good quality. And well, the Sony G Master series, it, it just doesn't get much better than that. Now, now this lens has everything you would expect out of a G Master lens. Uh, it is uh, weather sealed, or it is uh, dust resistant, um, and as a G Master lens, they've spared no expense on the design of this, of the quality of this, so it is a little bit heavier than the F4 version of this lens, and the price point was a bit much. Uh, $3,000 uh, here in the US for this lens but it's the best of the best. And this is the only lens on the market that has um, the f2.8 aperture available um, as wide as 12 millimeters to 24 millimeters. So it's available throughout the entire focal range and it's the only lens on the market that has that capability today for that f2.8 aperture. Uh, so I was going to Colorado and I wanted to take this along. So I thought I'd put together a little video for you from my trip. So let's start out well, before Colorado. So I'm here at the Cadillac Ranch just outside of Amarillo, Texas. Now, now these cars over here uh, were thrown into position by strongmen during one of those world's strongest man competitions. Wait, wait, hang on. Oh, it, it's an art installation. Sorry, art installation, not, not the strongman bit. Um, anyway, so uh, as you can tell, this is a very popular place and it's been well photographed, but I thought, you know, we're on our way to Colorado to shoot some landscapes, might as well try to get some interesting shots with the 12 to 24 uh, G Master. Um, now, what I wanna do is I wanna take a little bit of technology so you can actually see what the viewfinder is seeing here, and I'll walk you through my process on how to uh, capture unique images from a place that's been kinda, every picture's been taken of it, and especially with how bright it is outside, this is gonna be interesting. What I found is that most people in places like this will tend to take pictures from eye level. So I always try to either get high or get low. So in this case, setting the ISO to 100, and getting really low for the shot so you can truly see these Cadillacs coming out of the muddy ground. The blessing and the curse of this place is that anybody can spray paint on these Cadillacs. Well, the unfortunate part is there's a bunch of litter. So I tried to tell the true story of this scene so you could see some of, this, uh, some of these paint cans in the foreground of the shot. So I was walking around some more and I was taking pictures that were lit up by the sun, but then I decided to include the sun as a compositional element. So I started out at f2.8, but then I thought, okay, let's see how this lens can handle um, sun stars because everybody loves a good quality sun star. And, and so I actually found out there was a hair and I thought it was on the lens so you can see me coming into frame here. Um, and trying to blow it off. That didn't work. So it was actually on the sensor. So I had to, take the lens off real quick and, and get it. Uh, but once once I got that, I ended up with this shot, and this was actually my favorite shot of the entire visit. So the Cadillac Ranch was a little bit of a hit and miss because it was it was really cool, but man, all the litter just kind of just got to me. Uh, but anyways, I, I made my way up to Colorado to the beautiful and uh, tiny little touristy town of Estes Park, Colorado uh, to go to Rocky Mountain National Park. I'm here at Rocky Mountain National Park with the new lens, and I want to talk to you about wide-angle distortion, especially ultra-wide-angle distortion. So if I'm shooting architecture or something like that, I want the camera to be perfectly level, or else if I tilt the camera up or down, the, there's going to be converging lines, so you're going to see the, the, the buildings start to come together uh, and, and, and distort a little bit. Now, most people try to avoid that, um, but when you have one of these ultra-wide-angle lenses like this 12-24 2.8, um, you can actually get some really interesting compositions with it. So that's what I'm going to do with this. So what I'm going to do is wait for uh, some cars to go by. And I'm going to get really, really low to the ground with this camera. And I'm going to do a vertical shot and tilt the camera up at 12 millimeters. 
You see, we have these really tall trees on either side of the road. What it's gonna do is bend those trees inward a little bit, make them look even taller and more imposing. Uh, so distortion is not necessarily good or bad. It just depends on, on what you're using it for. So in this case, I want, I want to make the landscape as dramatic as I can. And that's where the 12 millimeter end of this lens is, is going to come uh, very, very useful. All right, so a lot of this is just waiting for the right moment for cars to stop coming by. There we go, I think we got a good one. So I found this tree trunk right here, and you see behind me over here, you have a bunch of trees that are in various stages of end of life, let's call it that, or just shedding for the annual season, uh, but it, it doesn't look like they're doing well. Um, what I want to do is use this tree trunk here as that foreground element that I was talking about. Do a, a really wide angle shot here where you'll be able to see the other trees in the background. And it may even go to 2.8 and really blur those out so the stump is the main thing in focus and use that almost as like a metaphor for the rest of the picture. But in the meantime, you can see uh, the mountains and the peaks all in the background. So it should make for a nice multi-layered composition that I was talking about. And I think what you'll find with pictures like that is the, the sharpness of the lens really matters. Uh, and that's what I really do like about this lens. It's incredibly sharp. People ask every once in a while, Andy, how do you find these compositions that you find? And, and the answer is really simple. Uh, in this case, I've been driving around Rocky Mountain National Park for about the past hour and a half, uh, waiting for people to leave so I can go do the hike that I originally came here to do. Uh, but I've just been driving around looking for things that are beautiful. Uh, and I think the human eye can catch something that is pretty and the human heart can tell when it's beautiful. So I've been trying to find things that are beautiful and take pictures of them for you. But it's really a simple process. Whenever, I whenever my, my eyes catch something and my heart decides it's beautiful, what I do is I stop and, and I sit there and I ask myself, what is it about that that made it beautiful? In this case, we have this fallen tree where, where the end of it just reaches out into the ether, into the infinite, and you have tree-covered mountains there, and then you have mountains behind that, and you even have these rocks here to frame either side of the shot. So this is about as natural of a composition as you could ever imagine. Uh, but all I need to do really is all of that excitement I just said and all that excitement you heard in my voice, I need to make what's in here look like what I just described to you. So that's my simple process. Find something that's beautiful, describe to yourself why it's beautiful, and then make your picture look like what you described. Okay, so you'll, you'll see and you can probably hear there's a little babbling brook behind me. So what I'm gonna do is I have the Sony here and I didn't bring a neutral density filter and, and that's actually, it's, since this has a bulbous front element, you can see it kind of curves. Um, it's kind of hard to put neutral density filters on this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is kind of cheat a little bit and combine these images in Photoshop. I'm gonna take two images. I'm gonna take one for the details and there's actually a really, really nice scene up there. So I think I'm gonna shoot vertical and try to catch that. And then I'm gonna take, so I'm gonna take one for like the details and the trees in the background. And then I'm gonna take another at like F32 uh, and try to drag the exposure as long as I can for the water to try to smooth it out. Uh, normally you lose a little bit of sharpness when you do that because of diffraction, but it doesn't really matter because smooth water is kind of out of focus anyways. So I'm gonna take those two shots real quick uh, and I think it should turn out pretty nice.
Well, it was a great day at Rocky Mountain National Park. I'm now here with Messy Hair in Silverthorne, Colorado, getting ready for another hike tomorrow. And this one's gonna be a bit of a doozy. In fact, it's like 9.30 at night right now and I need to get to bed because my wake up call is gonna be around 1.45 a.m. Uh, so Colorado has 53 different mountains that are over 14,000 feet uh, in height. And I've never climbed one before, so I'm gonna go climb one tomorrow. Um, now, because of that, so the camera that I'm filming this with is, is huge. It's about the size of this, this telephone right here. Um, obviously, taking the Sony, taking the 12 to 24, but instead of using this camera to film, because it is so heavy, I am going to be primarily filming with this little guy right here, the Sony ZV-1. So, the footage may look a little different tomorrow, but I still think you're gonna like it, and I know you're, you're gonna like the pictures that we come up with. Um, oh, and, and the plan for tomorrow may also involve some hitchhiking. We made it to Gray's Peak, 14,270 feet. Um, in, in meters, that's, I don't know, video editor, can you put what that is below? Thanks. Um, so I started by hitchhiking. The, the guy shooting this, Jeremy, was kind enough to uh, pick up a random dude wearing all black at three in the morning uh, to take me to the trailhead. We hiked all the way up here. We came all the way up this valley, uh, and then we might go up this ridge up here to Torrey's Peak as well. But it has been so much fun using the Sony 12 to 24 f 2.8 G Master lens to take all sorts of pictures. And I've showed you a lot of those pictures along the way. So I really hope you've enjoyed seeing the pictures. I enjoyed taking them. I think this lens is a must have for any serious landscape photographer. So, man, now I'm just going to enjoy this for a little bit. Maybe go hike a, a little more. And then, uh, you know, we'll see what we end up with next. I mean, that mountain peak was was amazing. I was, when, when I decided to drive back to Texas, I drove actually through Amarillo again, and I, I had to charge my Tesla uh, at the Amarillo Supercharger, which is like a mile away from Cadillac Ranch. So I was in Amarillo and it was nighttime. So I thought, you know, the Milky Way season is almost over here in the Northern Hemisphere because the core of the Milky Way drops below the horizon in about late September. And it was nighttime, and I thought, well, Amarillo has a lot of light pollution, but I wonder if I can get a Milky Way shot from Cadillac Ranch. Well, I hope you enjoyed my trip. I, I had a uh, blast. My calves are gonna be sore for weeks uh, from that hike, uh, but, but it was a truly, truly special trip. and. and the star of the show was the scenery and, and the majesty of the mountains and, and the communal aspect of everybody looking out for each other on the trail. But man, did I love this lens. The, the images were sharp, they were crisp, and they just had a character to them that you don't often find 
and an ultra wide angle lens. Uh, so I could not be happier with this lens. Now that said, this is expensive. If you need 12 to 24 millimeters and you're not using like the Sony a7R 4 like the massive megapixel cameras that Sony has, the 12 to 24 millimeter f4G lens is also a great lens. And if you're interested in one, let me know because I'm gonna be selling mine. Uh, but this lens, if, if, if you don't wanna make any compromises in your work and you need the ultimate, ultimate ultra wide angle lens, this is it. This lens was absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, and yeah, this is Andy Luton. I will, uh, I'll see you next time.